بسم الله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وبعد ان شاء الله so today we're going to study inshallah uh, the fa'il again and last week's uh, video got lost so I'll do it again this week it, is, you know, it helps to do it more than once anyway um, so al-fa'il is the subject in a verb based sentence that's what a fa'il is the subject in a verb based sentence The Imam uh, Al Rumi within the text he defines it. Who is the marfu'u? The mazkuru qablahu fi'luhu. The ism marfu'u. The mazkuru qablahu fi'luhu. Fi'luhu. So the noun ism the marfu'u is the state of marfu'u, state of rafa. You can say the mazkuru qablahu fi'luhu. That is preceded. By its verb. All right, so just to make that clear in case you know, you're still not sure. Uh, sentences. So we have a noun based sentence. A noun based sentence. Uh, first we have a noun, and then we have another, another noun. That's how it works. A noun, then a noun. A verb based sentence. We have a verb and then a noun. Of course, in Arabic we start from the right to the left, right? So we're going this way. And then we have complex sentences. And that is where either you have a verb based sentence within a noun based sentence or a noun based sentence within a verb based sentence. Either way, they're a bit complex. I'll give an example of it where, for example, there's more than, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I'll give you one. Is when you have a noun and then a verb. And you're going this way. So it starts with a noun, but then you have a verb after it. So in general, it's a noun based sentence because it starts with a noun. So in general. But then this one over here is a verb based sentence. So you have a verb based within a noun based sentence. So these are the three types of sentences. So when we say the word fa'il, we were referring uh, specifically to verb-based sentences. Specifically, right? Uh, now the thing is, every verb is a sentence within itself. So it'll always have a fa'il, right? But the fa'il has to be a part of a verb-based sentence. You will not, meaning you will never find a fa'il in a sentence that is, looks like this. That is noun-based with a noun and a noun. Neither of these will ever be a fa'il. Because there's no verb around it. Okay, that's an important difference. Because we'll be studying other... Uh, other words like mubtada and khabar, they'll also be subjects and you'll be like, well, you just, we study the subject, yeah. But we study a subject in a verb-based sentence, not in a noun-based sentence. They're a bit, they're a bit different, uh, well, of course, not, not philosophically, but just uh, grammatically, there, there are differences. Okay, so this usm al-marfu' al-madhkuru qablahu fi'luhu. This noun that is in state of marfu' that is preceded by its verb. Um, can, we, can I remind you quickly of what marfu' is in, uh, in mansub? So there's the statuses, right? of flexible, grammatically flexible words, right? Of grammatically flexible words, right? So we have four statuses. We studied them at the beginning of this. We said Rafi'ah was the big first one, and then Nasb, and then Jar, and then Jazm. And I told you that these three are for nouns, and these, <coughs> and one, two, three is for verbs. A verb cannot be majroor, and a noun cannot be majzoom at any point ever. What is rafi'ah? What is what? If, if if we say something is marfu'ah, then what does that mean? It means one of two things. It's either, or it's actually it means one thing with two conditions. Sorry. So it's a main character. It's untainted. So nothing's affecting it from outside the sentence, or something, nothing's added to the sentence to affect its status. It's main character, and it's pure. It's in its pure, in its pure, its pure status. Not, nothing touches, it'll be marfu'a, right? Now, nasib is one of two things. Either a tainted main character. So this guy here, but something came and tainted him, so now he's no longer marfu'a, he's bonsub, he's less, or a secondary character. Jar. What did we say Jar was? 
unnecessary characters. Anything that's unnecessary to the sentence. It's additional, offer you additional meanings, but the sentence will survive without it. The basic ideas are in the sentence. They're just, these are additional stuff. Jazm is a neutral meaning. Meaning the meanings differ based on the situations. It's a case to case, because it only applies to verbs, right? Only verbs for jazm. And that makes it uh, a bit more uh, complex in study. When, when, as we study it along, we'll, well, I'll explain more and more, inshallah. So th this kind of leave that out. But these three are, are, are clear. You should understand them the way they are, inshallah. Okay. So what we're studying is what? An ism, a noun that is marfu'a. Not a verb that is marfu'a. We're studying a noun that is marfu'a. So it's going to be an untainted main character within the sentence. Is the subject an untainted main character? Subject is a main character. Uh, you need it. If you don't have a subject, then you don't have a sentence. You need to, you know, if, if something's happened, you have to know who did it to an extent. Hold on. All right? So it's the now that the state of Rafa or Rafa, I think Rafa is a better way to put this. The state of Rafa that is preceded by its verb. Okay. So there are two uh, categories for the fa'il. The first category is Zahir. And the second one is Mudmar. Zahir means apparent. Mudmar means. Now, I, I told it estimated once before. I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm revisiting the, uh, the usage of, uh, of that word. What is the translation of it in here? Implicit. Implicit. What does that even mean in English? What does that mean in English? Do you have an idea what implicit means in English? Hidden. Written? Hidden. Hidden. That's what the... Uh, so applied. So applied. Yeah, uh, uh, implied. yeah. Implied. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, means that it's not... It's either... A, so what it's going to be is either a pronoun or it will be estimated. Right, so mudmar means, I think hidden is probably... No, it's not hidden, it's there. <laughs> it's there, it's just, uh, it's a damir. It comes from the word damir, damir is pronoun, like. Uh, and, that, and that's what it's trying to say. So, dhahar apparent is going to be a noun. It's going to be a clear noun. Mudmar is going to be either a pronoun, or it's going to be something that's estimated uh, altogether. So, implicit is what he did, and implicit is what I'm going to do. Because I have no idea what else it means, really. <clears throat> I don't know how to uh, translate this properly. But that's the idea. The idea is, is that sometimes the subject, the file, will be a word, a noun that you can see. And sometimes it will be a pronoun, something attached to the verb, or it won't be there at all. And I'll give you three examples so that you, you understand exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about. So, al-zahir, qama zaydun. So, qama is a verb, right? It could be qama, it could be yaqumu. It could be in the past tense, it could be in the uh, present tense, doesn't make a difference. Got up or is getting up. Zaid. Now who did this action? Zaid did it. So he's the subject, right? He is a noun that is preceded by its verb. It's the subject of the, uh, uh, of the sentence. So it's going to be rafu'a. What is the marker of rafu'a in a singular noun? Boom. That's the marker of Rafa. Markers, remember markers? We talked about marfu'a is the style, it's going to be an untainted main character. Now what are the markers of Rafa? Depends on the type of word. Sometimes it'll be a dhamma. Sometimes it'll be an alif, like in the dual form. Sometimes it'll be a waw, a noon, like within the jami'a mudhakka salam, the masculine, uh, the masculine sound uh, 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 plural. Uh, or it could be, what else could it be? Tabut and nun in a verb, right? But we don't need that in a, we're not talking about that. Or it could be, it could be a wow, uh, for example, in uh, the five exceptional, five exceptional nouns, right? So depending on the type of word, we'll have the marker of rafa'il, it'll differ. It'll differ one, but it's all marfu'a at the end. I mean, the status is still, is still rafa'a, regardless of the, of the marker. So qama zaydun, here's an example of a fa'il that is a parent, verb, and then immediately you have the subject after it, it's a noun. Now, mudmar, let's talk about pronoun. Atayna, or let's use the same verb. 
qumna. Right? Atayna, we came. The verb is first. Qumna, we stood up. The verb is first. What is the subject here? It's this guy. This guy is the subject. It's a pronoun. Yeah, it's not. It's a pronoun. It's not a, it's not a full word, right? It's actually attached to the... Uh, to, to, the, to, to the verb itself, right? So that's an example of a pronoun, of, of the fa'il being a pronoun. It's not actually a noun. Well, you'll say, well, you just said it's a, it's a noun. Yeah, it's a noun in theory. Philosophically, it's a noun. We, our people, uh, we're, we're nouns. Meaning, when we're called, you're not going to call me as a verb. I'm not a verb. I mean, when you call me my name, I'm a noun, right? That's what I'm going to end up being in, on, on, on paper right, when you write. So, but this is, but we're not actually calling who did it. By name, we didn't say we didn't say Qama, Adnan, or Hafizu, or Khalil, or Bassam. We said Qumna. So instead of calling all the all the all the fawail, these are all the subjects, we take a, took a pronoun instead of it. But it's uh, substituting a number of fa'il. So yes, the the the, fa'il, the subject is always a noun, and sometimes it'll be something that substitutes the noun. What what substitutes the noun? Pronoun, and sometimes an estimation. An estimated Damir. Uh, I'll give you an example. Qama. That's a sentence. Qama. How would you translate it in Arabic? What would you say in English? He. You say he. Why do you say he? Where is he? Shu Khalil. Ala kefak? You're going to start making things up, Khalil? <laughs> It's understood. Yes, yeah, so it's estimated. Meaning, when you say qama, uh, we've had a conversation before this, and we were talking about someone. And that someone, we've, we, we, there's understanding of who that is. So qama, the, uh, the fa'il, the subject, is an estimated huwa. He. He got up. Exactly. It was if it was qamat, he would say hiya. It was a, a feminine a pronoun. Right? So it's mudmar. Uh, I, I'm, I'm good to say that this is actually a uh, uh, pronoun. The pronoun will be uh, written, written or, or verbalized, vocalized like it's, it's said, or an estimated pronoun. That's probably how we should uh, break it down. Meaning these are pronouns. Huh? Sometimes a pronoun will be written, qumna, and sometimes it will be estimated. Does that, does that make sense in general? Yeah. So these are the three types of, of fawail. Now, the, this is the noun. This is what we talk about. These two substitute the noun. Right? The, the noun can always be substituted by a pronoun. It can always be substituted. Uh, you understand that? But even in English, that's quite uh, clear. Examples. If you... Al <coughs> madrasa school. That's a noun. Is there a pronoun for it? Say hadihi or hiya or tilka. Right? So in Arabic, hadi and tilka don't don't add up as estimated pronouns. Estimated pronouns have to be something like hiya. So it's, it's just based on whether it's feminine or it's masculine. It's a masculine noun, the, uh, feminine noun, then it gets hiya as its uh, estimated pronoun. Yeah, but if you just said. So I'll give you an example. In Surah Yusuf, Wajat Sayyaratun Farsil Waridahum Fadila Delwa. So So Jaat Ja is a past tense verb, correct? Now who did the verb of coming, of arriving? Uh, they say uh, it wasn't a car, but it was a group of people, a caravan. Uh, they used to call caravans uh, sayyara, and then we called it cars later on. So sayyara is the subject here. This is the subject. It's an apparent subject. It's going to be marfu'ah. What is the marker of rafa in a singular noun? Right? Now, let's say you want to talk about the same caravan that came but you know but, but we've already talked about we use the word too many times so i said jaat you asked me about the sayyara well, i told you jaat that's what my answer that's a full sentence but where's the where's the uh, where's the subject 
it's like already in the conversation. Yeah, so it's implied, it's understood. Now what is the pronoun that substitutes it in that estimation? You don't say the estimated pronoun is sayyara. You say, yeah, the estimated uh, subject, sorry, is sayyara. You say it's an estimated, uh, an estimated subject and the pronoun for it is here. She. Does that make sense? In Arabic, all words are either he or she. Does Arabic have it? It's either huwa or here. You don't have it. English, you have he, she, and it. It is something that has no, that is not uh, conscious, right? Or it doesn't have life. So, uh, when you talk about the sun, you say it. Now, some, some people, uh, if they're poets, they'll call it she, if they want to give it life, right? But that's, you know, poets will give life uh, in, through English language. In the Arabic language, we're all poets, so we never call anything it. It's either hua or hiya. We don't have any... Uh, <laughs> everything has some uh, entity that we see. Okay, so this is what you need to learn, for, uh, basically. Understand what the fa'il is, what the subject is. The word, is a, is a, is word fa'il is a subject in a verb-based sentence. The way the Imam Al-Ajur Rumi defines it is a ism marfu' madhkur qablahu fi'luhu The noun that is in the state of rafi' that is preceded by its verb. Madhkur qablahu, something that is uh, uh, mentioned before it. Fi'luhu, which is, which is the verb. Yes? Al-madhkur qablahu fi'luhu Right? And then we broke it down, قال Imam, وهو على قسمين ظاهر, ظاهر ومضمر فظاهر نحو قولك Now he's going to give us examples of apparent now, uh, uh, subjects. Now he gives very repetitive and difficult yeah, examples that are almost uh, yeah, useless to, to use a million times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, read them out, tell you what they mean, then give my own examples, or we can come up with our own examples for apparent, uh, apparent subjects. So what the Imam said, he said, فَظَاهِرُ نَحْوَ قَوْلِكَ The apparent subject is like when you say قَامَ زَيْدٌ وَيَقُومُ زَيْدٌ Zayd got, got up or Zayd is getting up. And that is for a singular subject. A subject that is only, that is a singular noun. ثم قَالْ وَقَامَ الزَّيْدَانِ وَيَقُومُ الزَّيْدَانِ the two Zayds got up, or the two Zayds are getting up. And that is, for example, that's an example of a subject that is in the dual form. وَقَامَ الزَّيْدُونَ وَيَقُومُ الزَّيْدُونَ All the Zayds got up, or all the Zayds are getting up. I don't know why he chose to give examples like this, but this is what he did in the, in, in, in the, uh, in the Matin. And then he, exa exa he gave example of, um, and that is, of course, the, the masculine sound plural. Then he's going to give an example of the broken plural. So he said, قَامَ الرِّجَالُ وَيَقُومُ الرِّجَالُ The men got up, or the men are getting up. Then he gave an example of the singular feminine noun قامت هندن وتقوم هندن And then he example, gave an example of uh, a dual a dual uh, uh, feminine instead of a dual masculine, dual feminine فقال وقامت الهندان وتقوم الهندان The two hens got up or the two hens are getting up And then he gave an example of جمع مؤنث سالم The feminine sound plural قامت الهندات وتقوم الهندات All the hens got up or are getting up وَقَامَتِ الْهُنُودِ وَتَقُومُ الْهُنُودِ He gave an example of a broken plural that is in the feminine, uh, in the feminine form. قَامَتِ الْهُنُودِ تَقُومُ الْهُنُودِ Hunuds got up or getting up. وَقَامَ أَخُوكُ وَيَقُومُ أَخُوكُ He used the, uh, the five exceptional uh, nouns. Your brother got up or is getting up. وَقَامَ غُلَامِي وَيَقُومُ غُلَامِي And here he gave an example of a subject that uh, has lost its marker. At the end of it, my, uh, my, my, my son got up or my son is getting up. وَمَا أَشْبَهَ ذَلِكَ And the different examples. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, we read those examples, I'm going to give you my own so that you, we can make sense inshallah of what, uh, of what this is. Can you see, find a blue marker for me in there that works? So let's start with the first uh, type of subject. Let's start with the masculine. Thank you. Masculine singular noun. And the feminine singular noun. I'll take the singular nouns first. So who can give me examples of masculine, uh, uh, feminine, a masculine singular noun and a feminine singular noun? So a masculine, uh, masculine singular noun, yes? Masculine, feminine, or masculine, sing uh, ma uh, ma feminine singular, sorry, or masculine singular, what are we talking about? Feminine as in, yani, uh, yeah. this is mudakkar, this is mu'annath. 
kitab. So give me an example of a sentence with, where kitab is a subject. I mean, there's a verb before it. Futihad, if you remember, that's a passive verb. We did all the passive verbs. What comes after a passive verb is a na'ib fa'il. It's a substitute of the fa'il. We don't want the passive verbs, we want uh, direct verbs. That way, qara'a, did the book read itself? Who read the book? So Zaid is now the, uh, right? <laughs> it's okay, it just helps you kind of think. I'll give you an example, that's good. So um, I'll give you an example here. Qala rasulu. So the verb here is قَالَ قَالَ said in the past tense so this is the verb who did the saying الرسول that makes the Rasul the subject in a verb based sentence it's a verb based sentence because the verb comes at the beginning correct? that we already established that a verb based sentence is a sentence where the verb comes at the beginning so we already have the verb now after it's going to come a subject the subject is an ism marfu' so it's going to be in the state of rafi'. what's the uh, marker of rafi' in a singular noun? is this qala rasulu qala rasulu right? because it's in the, in the singular um, yeah, so Rasul is a mudakkar. It's a, it's a masculine. What's the word? Rusul? No. Uh, it's just uh, these things change. We don't. Uh, sometimes there are, are um, uh, clear rules. And sometimes they're not. Sometimes hadi uh, Rusul. Yeah, tilka Rusul. So Rusul is, uh, but that's not that's not a verb. I need a verb. No, no, I'm just asking. So I'll give you an example to, to you know, to, call it Rusuluhum. So call it is a verb. Right? So it's a verb based sentence. Right? The subject are the, the prophets, not the prophet, the prophets. Now the prophets uh, said, so they're the subject, so it's a marfu'. What is the marker of rafi' in a, in a, in a singular uh, feminine noun? It's dhamma. So rusuluhum. Here you see the dhamma. This is an additional part. There's a pronoun ad ad added to a, uh, doesn't count in Arab when we're talking. Now, why do you know, how do you know it's, uh, it's feminine? From the verb you know it's feminine. Yes, how do you know it's feminine? Yeah, so you have a ta. This ta here tells us that there's, it's going to be feminine. Right? Qalat rusuluhum. What other, uh, give me, can you give me more examples? Yes. Naam Adam. Naam Adam. Not from the Quran, but that's fine. Try to think from the Mus'haf as much as you can. It helps you understand the Quran more. So Naam Adam. Adam slept. So Naam is at the beginning. Right? It's at the beginning of the sentence. That means a verb-based sentence. That means this guy over here who did it is going to be a subject in a verb-based sentence with the fa'il. It's going to be marfu'. What is the marker of rafa' in the singular uh, masculine noun? Bamma. So Naam Adamu. Alright, I'll give you an example of something feminine from the Qur'an. وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ Sa'a is the name of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the Day of Judgment, right? The hour, the hour, the hour where everything changes. تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ The Day of Judgment or the hour happens or uh, you know, uh, occurs. So taqum, is it a past tense verb or a present tense verb? It's a present tense verb, right? It's a present tense verb. But it's a verb, nonetheless, at the beginning of a sentence, which makes this sentence a verb-based sentence. So whatever occurred is going to be the subject. The subject is going to be marfu'ah, which means that a sa'a, which is a singular feminine noun, is going to, what's the marker of for it? Bamba. Taqumu sa'atu. Right? Now what evidence do we have that this verb is, is talking about something that's feminine? Ta. Yeah, the ta at the beginning of it, right? If it was not, you would have had another, another ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right? So yaqum is a present tense it's a present tense verb, so it's a verb-based sentence. Who did the standing up or, or, or the, uh, uh, the, uh, the occurrence or getting up and being resurrected? It's the human beings, the people. The word nas is a singular uh, masculine noun. 
It's marfu'a, which means, what is the marker of rafa for the singular masculine now? Yes? So it's yawqumun nasu. What is the, how do we know that it's uh, masculine? Yeah, yeah. yeah, the ya yeah and the, right? So here, it's giving a little, little hints here. Yaqumu. What's coming later is most likely going to be a masculine. However, in the Arabic language, sometimes you can have a masculine verb and then a, and a feminine uh, subject. That's not a problem. That's accepted in, from, from in, in a lot of different examples. And I'll give you a few. Yes? Um, can I give an example? Yes, please do. Okay, who, who, who said, who did the saying? Yeah, so who did it? Qalat is the actual, she said, right? Yeah. Who said? Yeah. Who did? Who said, who did the saying? Yeah. It's Imra, it's Fir'aun, right? Is she in the sentence? Oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, so what we're looking for, now there is a subject, but the subject is a mudma, it's, a pro, it's an estimated pronoun. Qalat hiya. It's a, but what we're looking for? Apparent nouns right now. That's what we're studying. We're studying apparent nouns where the noun is written. It's not estimated, it's not a pronoun. Yes? What about uh, <coughs> Yeah, that works. Ja'ahul a'ma works. Over here. So ja'a is a verb, it's a past tense verb. Over here, this is an object. It's a pronoun, but it's an object. The one who actually came is the, the one who did the coming, or the arriving, or the yani, whose presence was, was Lama, was the, the, the blind man, right? So he's a subject within this verb-based sentence. Now what is the marker of uh, a subject, uh, a, a, sing, a masculine singular noun, what's the marker of it? Dhamma, but where's the Dhamma? On the word a'ma, where's the dhamma? Uh, okay, let me finish this and you can ask. Where's the, where's the dhamma here? It's an estimated dhamma. So the dhamma is estimated on the alif. We don't pronounce it, we don't write it, but we just estimate it being there. Yes, give me an example, Ahmed. Yeah, but where's the, who's the subject? Who did the khalq? Where's Allah's name in the ayah? Uh, Right, so always think you're looking for the one who did the verb for their name to be there, to be somewhere there we can see it. Very good. Qalat al Arab. And this is the final one we'll do for the feminine. Qalat al Arab. Al Arab were the Bedouins uh, that surrounded Medina and Mecca or Arabia. So the Arab said, so there, Arab is the subject. This is a verb based sentence. Qalat is a past tense verb. We know it's feminine because the ta is there, right? We know it's a feminine the subject. Arab is a, is a, as a group, they become, the, the, the plural becomes feminine. What is the marker of Rafa on the word Arab here? What's the marker? Yeah, so Qalat al Arab. Okay, so we'll stop, that, that'll be, that's enough for feminine, feminine singular nouns and masculine singular nouns. So just keep that in mind, that what is the marker of Rafa for the masculine singular noun and the feminine singular noun as a fa'il? It's always gonna be, Right? It's always going to be a dhamma. Sometimes it'll be an estimated one. Sometimes it's going to be an estimated one. But generally speaking, it's a, it's a real one. Yes, quite a question. Yes, go ahead. Then it's marfu'a? Sorry, Whenever there's a subject, whenever there's a verb, there has to be a subject. There are no verbs without subjects. Unless we're talking about a passive verb. A passive verb doesn't have a subject, it has a na'ib fa'il, it has a substitute of a subject. But if it's not a passive verb, then it's always going to be a subject. A past tense or present tense. We're not talking about command verbs. Command verbs don't have subjects because it's command. I'm commanding you, there's no subject here really. But when we talk about a past tense verb or a present tense verb, it's always going to have a subject. Sometimes the subject will be a zahir, now, sometimes it'll be a mudman, it'll be a pronoun that is either written, verbalized, or vocalized, or it's going to be estimated. Regardless, it's always marfu'a. The fa'il is always marfu'a. The fa'il will never be, a, when the, the moment you say the word fa'il, then it's going to be marfu'a. There's no, there's no uh, debating that. Okay, let's, let's try with the dual form. Let's, let's talk about the dual form. So let's say the masculine dual form. and the feminine dual form. So think of, of examples where there's a dual form. 
سو مثنى مثنى مذكر أو مثنى مثنى مؤنث. So give me examples of something where you can have a, uh, a dual form. All right, I'll give you one. Think, think if you can come up with something. So, قال رجلان من الذين يخافون أن عم الله عليهما. Right? قال رجلان. So قال said رجلان two men. I'm going to have to do a quick uh, refreshment of uh, of what the dual form actually is. All right? In case you've forgotten. So. If you take any word, any word in the Arabic language, any, any noun, any noun at all, give me a noun, give me any given noun. Khalil. Fine. Actually, it's, a, it's not a name, it's, a, it's also a, a, a description. Khalil means friend, right? Yeah. Uh, Ibrahim is called Khalil Rahman. Yes? Go ahead. Uh, a noun? Yes? Uh, Ibrahim. Ibrahim, very good. Let's use Khalil. No, uh, try, try to come up with something that's not a name. <laughs> so Khalil, Khalil is a friend. <laughs> but let's say use Khalil as a friend. So okay, this is the this is the uh, uh, singular form. If you want to turn it into a dual form, so here it's only one, the one and only Khalil Fadl. We have no one else. We want to make two. I'm going to clone Khalil, so we have two more. So I have more students for this though. So I'll clone Khalil, so we have two of them, right? Now we have two Khalils. In English, we don't have that. English is either one, or between one and infinity, it's just one difference. You just add ness somewhere <laughs> at the end of the sentence. In Arabic, no. There's one, two. And then jama. So you and your wife are not a jama. You're just two. You're just muthanna. You're just two. You have to have a kid and then you're jama. In English, it's a bit different. So dual is two. How do I turn it into dual? I have two ways to do it. I, either I add an alif and noon, khalilan, or I add aya and noon with a fatha before it, khalilayn. So either Khalilan or Khalilain. Are you seeing the, uh, the application? There. So he gave me Ibrahim. That's, that works. Ibrahiman or Ibrahimain. Give me more examples of nouns. Kalb. Tayyib, Kalb. Kalban. Oh, Kalbain. I can't hear. Like King Malik. Malik, yeah, Malikan or Malikain. So that's how it's going to sound. What about Khalilah? What is that? That's when you're using that That's when there's a mudaf ili after it. Hold your horses. That's, that's a bit far down the road. But yeah, you just take the noon can sometimes can be taken off in certain positions. Now, what's the difference between Khalilan and Khalilain? Are there a difference? What's the difference? Who's Marfu'a? So when it's and when there's alif, this is rafa. This is the status of rafa is marfu'a. And this one here, khalilain, is either mansub, nasub, or jar. So nasub, if it's mansub or majroor, it's going to be khalilain. Doesn't matter. Only if it's marfu'a, it's going to sound as khalilan. Now, al fa'il, is it a word that is marfu'a, mansub, or majroor? It's always, it's always marfu'a. Right? It's always in the state, always in the state of rafa. A fa'il will always be in the state of rafa. So if the verb is they said, someone said something, and, and these two guys did it, then this is going to be the fa'il, and the fa'il is marfu'a. Right? It's a dual form. So what is the marker of rafa in the word rajulan? Qala rajulan. Now qala rajulain. You say qala rajulain, then the person listening to you is yeah, not sure what you're talking about. Why are you saying Rajulain? That makes no sense. Unless some guy's name is Rajulain, that makes no sense at all in Arabic. It has to be, yes? No, the same thing. You could say Qala Rajulain. You could add here. It doesn't change the fact that the word, the two men are the subject of this sentence. They're a subject and there's a verb before, so it's a verb based sentence. It's going, they're going to be marfu'a. If they're marfu'a, then alif noon. Not yet, noon. So let me give you, let me, let me, let, let's put together something. Let me say, um, so Laib, the player, all right? So let's say the player of a sport, he came. So what would you say if one player came? Atta or Jaa, right? Can you go to Jaa? Okay, this is just for the easy. So, Ja'al Laib. 
Now, if I told you that it's not one player who came, two players came, then what would you say? Ja'a. Ja ah, alhamdulillah, because I almost, almost shot my head, yeah, myself in the head. Ja'a. <laughs> so Ja'a. Al-la'ib. Yeah. We're going to say two. So when, we make, when you take the word la'ib, uh, you're going to turn it into muthanna. You're going to add either alif noon or ya noon. Well, what is it? Is it marfu'ah? Well, it's the subject, and it's marfu'ah. That means I'm going to add an alif and noon. I'm going to add a ya and noon. So I'll say, ja al la'iban. Yeah, the listeners say la'ibun. We'll, 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 in a second. We'll do that in one minute. We'll come to the la'ibun in a second. Let's try something else. Think of examples from the Quran. Can you think of an example from the Quran that has muthanna in it? They have, uh, they have two things. Uh, never mind. I'm going to say ja and also. So we're thinking of two, of, of two, of two things happening at the same time. Yes, yeah, so can you give me a file? Where, where, where it's a file? Yeah, those are all th uh, dual forms. But is there a, is there a verb before it so it turns into a so it's a file or not? <laughs> it's okay. Let me. Uh, let, let, let me. Uh, I'll give, give a word again, and then you guys can uh, can can do can do the, can do the same thing. Let's do it on the uh, on the on the, uh, fe uh, on the feminine side. All right. So al kura, the ball, right? In Arabic, that's what it's called al kura. So let's say I want to say that the ball flew, flew up, right? So what would I say? Para. Tarat al kura, right? Because it's, uh, it's 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 feminine. So you say tarat. Now I want to say two balls flew. No, this stays the same. This stays the same. That's not what we're gonna change. This is this is the subject. It's marfu'a. So right. So apply it here. So what would you add if it's marfu'a? What would you add? Alif and nun. So how would you add it? Add it. How would you say? No, you're right. So you add an alif and nun to it. How would you add an alif and nun? Quratan. So this guy who used to be considered as a ta' marbuta, now he's promoted and he's turned into a complete ta'. So finally he fulfills his destiny, he becomes a ta'. And now we say tarat al quratan. Why not <sighs> So you, so you can say that in certain situations. That, that's a quite a, uh, that's a bit of a, a, a more detailed uh, study uh, when it comes to when it comes to applying. Uh, pronouns to verbs before their uh, before their subjects. So you can't say tarata al quratan. You can say al quratan tarata. If you flip it, then it works because you've already referred to the to the two at the beginning. But before that, you just say tarat. You can even take off the ta if you like. You can say tara, and that's fine from an Arabic perspective. Until the subject is there, you don't know. You don't know. The subject hasn't been spoken of yet. Only until the subject has been spoken of can you start adding a pronoun to the verb uh, to, su to substitute it or to add to, add to it. <sighs> Any more examples you guys can think of? Just give me a word and let's just build it on a word. Give me a word. Yalla, give me a word. Any noun. Yalla, just do it like that. Any noun. Qadam? Why are you always interested in feet? Qadam. Hmm? Places. Yes, Qadam. So let's say we want to uh, build a sentence uh, with a singular foot. Right? <laughs> yeah. So let's say the foot walked. It moved. Right? So is, is Qadam uh, masculine or feminine? Masculine. Huh? In a Arabic, Qadam is actually feminine. Hadi al Qadam. You don't say Hadi al Qadam. You say Hadi al Qadam. So this guy goes over here. Yeah. So it's over here. So let's say Mashat al Qadam, right? <coughs> the foot walked. That's a verb. It's a verb based sentence. This is a subject. It has a dhamma on it because that's the, right? Because it's a singular noun. Now, if you want to make it into the dual form, how do you turn the word Qadam to a dual form? Yes. Why Qadaman? Why not Qadamain? Why? What's the reason? Yes, because. The fa'il, the subject, is always marfu'ah. And the way a dual form is going to be seen marfu'ah is going to be with an alif and noon. So you say al-qadaman. And if I ask, what is the marker of rafa' in this word, you'll tell me it's the alif and noon. That's what you'll say. 
Because why? Because it's a dual form. Because it's a muthanna. All right. No, the same thing. Again, you don't you don't add, you don't play around with the verb as, until the, the the subject has been spoken of at least once. So either the verb stays either masculine, uh, normal mesha, or meshat, nothing else. And mesha is safer. You can just use the masculine form. All right. All right, let's talk about the second uh, group. Do you guys remember what a sound masculine plural is? So a sound. Yep, masculine plural. So jamia al mudakkar salim. And then we have, do we have uh, something like it in, in, in for the feminine? Do we have a sound feminine plural? Yes, we have a sound feminine plural. Is this, are they the exact? Are they the same? No, they're very different. So jamia al muannath. Salim. All right, give me an example of jamia al mudakkar salim. No, that's not jamia mudakkar salim. That's a broken plural. What? What was the example? Muslimun. So, before we start with the examples, let's do the same thing we did a second ago. So let's take the word he gave me. So one Muslim, one Muslim. If I turn it into the dual form, it'll be Musliman if it's marfur, and Muslimain if it's mansub or majroor. Now, in the sound, masculine plural so in the sound masculine plural it'll turn into muslimun or muslimin and subhanallah the same thing applies for both these two guys up here are marfu'a and these two guys are here either mansub or majroor one of the two things right now a fa'il, a subject, is always what? It's always marfu'a. So when we take the word Muslim, and you want to build a sentence on it, right, when you make it a subject, and it's going to be a sound masculine plural, what's it going to look like? Like, it look like this, this or this? Right, it's going to be muslimun, it's not going to be muslimin. So, let's say qama al-muslimun, or something simple, salla. So the Muslims prayed. It's a verb-based sentence or a noun-based sentence? And how do you know? How do you know it's a verb-based sentence? Yeah, because it started with a verb. It's very simple. It's not uh, any chemistry. It's very simple. What, is, what does a sentence start with? Verb. It's a verb-based sentence. Verb-based sentences have, have subjects after the verb, right? Who did the subject? Who did the verb, sorry? Who did the praying? It's the Muslims, right? So, so Muslims right now are going to be the subject. A subject is always marfu'a. What is the marker of rafi'a in a sound masculine plural? The wow. Right? If you said salah al-muslimin, that'd, that'd be a big problem. People will be looking at you, What's, what are you doing? Salah right? al-muslimun, because they're the subject and that's what they do. All right. Give me more examples. Who, well, what other examples uh, can you give me? From the Quran, maybe. Yawma yaqulu al munafiquna المنافقات للذين آمنوا يوم يقول المنافقون يقول is a present tense verb correct so it's a verb based sentence so it has a subject the prayer people who are saying are the hypocrites on the day of judgment that means this is the subject what is the marker of rafi' in this subject when I say the word subject because you asked me the question and this is what you were asking is, is it, are subjects always marfu'a yes the moment you say subject then you're saying it's marfu'a now what I'm asking you if it's marfu'a what is the marker of rafi'a that is what's more confusing the reason that we're studying the fa'il is because we studied a couple of weeks ago we studied something called um, al-asma' al-marfu'a we studied all the nouns that are in the status of rafi'a 
What are they like? And we start, we start, the first one we did was fa'al, subject. And then the na'bil fa'al, the subject of the subject. Then we said mubtada and khabar, and isim kana, and khabar inna. We said all these, all these, all, so we talked about seven of them, and then tawabi'ah. And we said that these are nouns that are in the status of rafa'ah. The moment you say fa'al, immediately it's marfu'ah, right? So munafiqun, what, is it, what, what you have to learn to, to pay attention to is what is the marker of rafa'ah in a word? So in the word munafiqun, what is the marker of rafa'ah here? Yeah, because if you're asked why, it's all because of sound, masculine, and plural. If it wasn't marfu'ah, eh, it would be what? Munafiqeen. If it was mansub or majroo, you say immediately munafiqeen. You wouldn't think of twice about it. Right? Munafiqeen, that's dual now. Munafiqeen is, is uh, sound, uh, masculine, plural, right? Munafiqeen would be mansub majroo. Munafiqeen, now we're talking dual. We're not talking plural anymore. All right. Some fa'al is in mushtaqat. We're not, we're too far away right now to talk about. They're very different. Uh, some fa'al is more of a, it's a derivative. So it's a form of word. It's how the word sounds. The word la'ib, the word la'ib is at the same, with this, is, is, is a derivative that is equal to fa'il. It sounds the same thing. Fa'il, la'ib. That's called an ism fa'il. But the word la'ib could sometimes be a subject in the sentence, and sometimes it can be an object in the sentence, sometimes it can be majroor, completely unnecessary in the subject, sentence. So not every ism fa'il is a fa'il. Right? And not every fa'il is a fa'il either. But they're, they're different things, they're different studies. So let's say, we're gonna, let's talk about the sound feminine plural. So muslima. You have one fe feminine Muslim, female Muslim. If I want to make it into a dual form, what does it look like? Dual form. Muslimatan, right? Now, if it's marfu'a, if it's mansur majroor, muslimatain. Now, the sound feminine plural. What's the sound feminine plural of this? Plural. Muslimat. Perfect. And I put it in the middle because it's always Muslimat. There's nothing else. The other ones we were saying, okay, this is the marker of Rafi' is the Alif. The marker of Nasr bin Jar is the Ya. Here, the marker is not a letter. The marker here is a, is a mini vowel, is a haraka. So, what is the marker of Rafi' for the word Muslimat? What's the marker of Rafi' for the word Muslimat? Say Muslima Tun. That's Rafa. That means Marfu'a. And if it's Mansub or Majroor, if it's in the status of Nasib or Jar, it's Muslima Tin. When is it Muslima Tan? In what situation would it be Muslima Tan? Never. It'll never be Muslima Tan. You can never say that. If you say that, that means you, yeah, and you, that's the only situation where you're completely outside the Arabic language, no one knows you. Muslimatan, that's, there's no such thing. No sound feminine plural will ever have fatihtain on the end of it. It has to either be dhamtain, dhamma, rafa, or nasab in will be muslimatin. Yes, uh, Hamdi. Can I give an example for the jama'ah? But aflaha means. Very good. Aflaha. They succeeded. It's a past tense verb. They succeeded. Who did, who did the success? Who, who, who succeeded? The mu'minun, the believers. Now, the believers are going to be the subject. The subject, the fa'al, is always marfu'ah. Now, al-mu'min, if you make it into a sound masculine plural, it'll either be mu'minun or mu'minin. Right? Which one is marfu'ah? Mu'minun. Right? That's why we write aflah al-mu'minun. And if I ask you, what is the marker of rafi' for the word mu'minun? You say, this is a sound masculine plural, and the marker of rafi' is the wa'aw and nun. Yes? So are there any exceptions? Like, are there going to be any words that have, like, the, the, the singular word is the same as the dual? No. No, no. That's why we studied these at the beginning. That these, uh, these are different. That the singular noun 
has markers that are different from the dual form, that are different from the sound masculine plural, that are different from the broken plural. They're different, they have different markers. Now if, you, if you're confused about them, go back to the first maybe four videos of, of this, uh, of this uh, study and you'll find that I break them down much more clear for you so if, you get, if you get confused with them, inshallah. And I'll make a, I'll make a handout at the, by the end of probably this month uh, so you guys can carry it around and, and look at it. Now, let's, let's use the example we talked about in terms of a sound feminine plural. Oh no, let's say... Uh, so give me an example of a, of, a, uh, of a sound feminine plural. Anything at all. And then I'll, add, I'll make a sentence out of it. Or we'll make a sentence together. So what's one that's in the Quran all the time? Muslimat, we did that. Let's do something different. Samawat, maybe? Samawat is everywhere in the Quran. You find it in a lot of different places. So this, hmm? so this is an example of a sound feminine plural. You went from the word sama. You added an alif and ta. You don't say samaat. You say samawat. You, you change the, 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 the hamza to a waw and becomes samawat. And that's what we did, right? Muslima, we added an alif and ta. That's all we did. We just added an alif and ta to the end of it. Jannat, right? Jannat. So let's say qamat is samawat. The cosmos of the heavens occurred, right? Or happened, or stood, or existed. So qamat is a past tense verb. Right? So it's a past, this is a verb based sentence. Samawat, the, the heavens or the skies or the cosmos, are the subject, the fa'il of the sentence. Now they're always, the, sub, the fa'il is always going to be what? It's always marfu'a. What is the marker? We're not debating that, that's clear. But the question is, what is the marker of rafa' in the word samawat? No, it's a dhamma. The marker is either two dhammas for rafa' or, nas, or two kas, uh, kasra for nasr bin jar. This is how we turn it into a, uh, a plural. This is how we do it. We add an elephant. Now it's a plural. But is it marfu or mansub or majroor? That depends on whether there's dhum or there's kasratain. Yes? So where, where are they All right. Clear? What else can we give me examples on? Uh, Ja'at. al -bayinat. Al-Bayyina, the clarifications came. Al-Bayyina is one clarification. Al-Bayyinat are the clarifications, all of them, right? So Ja'at came. This is a, a, a past tense verb. The subject, the fa'al of this past tense verb is the word Bayyinat. Now the question, of course it's marfu'ah. We've already established that every fa'al is going to be marfu'ah. What is the marker of Rafi'ah on the word Bayyinat? Right? Ja'at al-Bayyinatu. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, give me a sentence though. Give me a, give me a, give me a sentence. What's another word for Asian? I know the slang word, but... Nazalat. Al-ayat. Right? Al-ayat, verses or signs. Aya is one. Ayat is the plural. Nazalat means the descended. So this is a past tense verb. Correct? How do we know that the, uh, the subject is going to be feminine after it? The ta at the word nazalat, right? This is the subject, this is the fa'il. Fa'il equals marfu'ah. Immediately, you see the word fa'il is marfu'ah. Now what you need to make sure you're understanding is, what is the marker of rafa'ah within a given word? So what's the marker of the word ayat? Yes. Are you, are you, is that making a bit, uh, bit sense to everyone? So that's the ayat too. Okay, so let's take one word and see if we can build we can build a couple of uh, sentences until the iqama. So 
let's take one singular noun and then turn it into dual and then turn it into a masculine sound plural and then turn it into a feminine a so, uh, sound plural and see how, how that works out. Let's say the word qalam. So that's a singular noun. How could you make it a fa'al, just that word itself? How could you make this a fa'al? So give me a verb. What was a good verb? Kataba. Kataba al qalam. The pen wrote, right? So now it's a fa'al. Fa'al equals marfu'ah. Now, what is the marker of rafi'ah on the word qalam? Qalamu. Same word. Let's turn it into a dual form. What's the dual form that it could be in? Qalaman. Give, give me something before it. What's a good verb before that? You can use the same verb if you like. You can say katab al qalaman. Right? You can say katab al qalaman. What you're saying is the two pens wrote. It's a subject. Subject fa'il equals marfu'a. Marfu'a means for a dual form, alif and noon. If it wasn't marfu'a, you would say qalamayn. You wouldn't say qalaman. Now turn this for me. Into, uh, we can't turn it into. Can we turn this into a, a sound masculine uh, plural? Can we say qalamun? No. Right? Can we turn it into a, a feminine sound plural? Qalamat? No, we can't say that either. Yeah? So it doesn't accept being a masculine sound plural. It doesn't accept being a feminine sound plural. Um, next time we'll talk about the broken plural, inshallah, for, for the, for the, uh, for the fa'al. We'll, we'll end with that. Jazakum Allah khair. Subhanakallah, bihamdika, shalom, la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka, tubu ilayk, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.